Hey there Hunters and welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. Today we're going to talk about updates to our meta sets for Gunner weapons now that we have new gear and new decorations from Title Update 2. What we got was three new armor sets, effectively no new weapons since they're bad, and a bunch of new decorations. Despite this however, we really aren't going to be changing our meta sets too much. The budget friendly versions of these are definitely much, much better, and closing that gap between the budget and the min max sets thanks to the level 4 shot type up decorations for our raw stuff and the level 4 elemental decorations for our elemental sets. But these are only going to free up like one more slot for the most part, so depending on your augments, we're really only going to get like one more skill than before for like the min-max versions. The reason why the min-max sets aren't going to change too much is that ultimately it's all upon your armor augments, and that could vary like greatly. None of the new skills are going to be built around, and we already have so many like one-piece inclusions to get certain skills on our sets that we really can't change stuff. So honestly, I'm not going to go around and manually update all my sets because that took way too long before. So instead, I'm going to be updating all the budget sets, which was going to work as a great solid core foundation for everybody. And you can fill in what you need with augments, charms, and weapon slots. I feel this would be easier for most people, and honestly, the min-max sets aren't going to be too much different from the last update, so you can just check those out. You might be able to just cram in like one new skill. I'm going to kind of just give recommendations on what I would upgrade from these you know, basic sets first, and then I'll probably include you know, whatever sets I have done at that point. So we're going to start with the updated budget sets for Light Bow Gun. These are all using no augments on the armors, although the charms are going to be using a Wex 2 2 1 charm, which is slightly better than the last update where I was only using a Wex 2 charm, because charm rates also got buffed this patch, so getting something slightly better is probably more likely. Plus, I think this is a nice happy medium ground between well, not a trash charm and like an actual good charm. So normal three light bow gun, like look at this set, like this looks like a straight up meta set. This is our budget set that has no armor augments and this basic charm, and it has it all, even ballistics. Now from here, if you have better charms or augments, I do recommend trying to get max might or peak performance three. I believe the min max light bow gun can do both, but that's basically all you're missing. You do want Max Might on these Light Bowgun sets because you can keep your stamina pretty much topped off all the time if you're just using Countermines to evade and just walking around everything else, especially now that the attack homing got kind of gutted. And with Max Might, you do hit 100% affinity. Peak Performance is easy to slap on with Camellios' head now as well, so that's also just free 20 raw. Normal 3s are still quite strong, and while they'll never be the best MO, they do perform well enough to warrant using, especially for people new to gunning. Rapid Fire Normal 2s is kind of rough to do on a budget to be honest, so I don't really have it set for that, since Rapid Fire decorations are still quite expensive, and honestly, Normal 3s are just kind of better anyway. But if you want to run a min-max Rapid Fire Normal 2 setup, it would look something like this, basically getting peak 3 over our previous iterations. For Rapid Fire Pierce 2s, I still prefer Malzino's Light Bowgun. This budget set is also great, but it is still missing a few things. Your first priority would probably be to finish off attack and get attack 7, and then you'll want to somehow fit in the Sinister Magnamalo legs so you can get Mail of Hellfire 1, which is worth 15 raw. Fully min-max, you can squeeze in Peak 3 and Max Might, or Agitator, but that's kind of a stretch. I honestly haven't been using Pierce ammunition much in Sunbreak, as monsters that would be good for Pierce are just better with Elemental Pierce, unfortunately. It's still a great ammo, and it's useful for a large portion of the roster, so it's fine if you want to have like a general purpose bowgun, Rapid Fire Pierce 2s definitely fill that niche. But if you're going to hyper focus and actually like, you know, try to do the best you can on a monster, you're going to want to use something like elemental or just spreads. Speaking of spreads though, let's talk about spread 3 light bow gun. This bread and butter budget setup has it all. All the damage, ballistics, spare shot, like everything. And like all the other raw bow gun setups, peak performance and max might will be the skills you want to fit in next. Don't worry about extra points of bloodlust. Burst or Coalescence, these skills are great for one point only and they don't really scale all that well. And I'd only really put in more if I have like nothing else to put in. Spread 3 Light Bogan is still chunky and strong so I would recommend giving it a go. The Spread Light Bogan is the only Bogan we won't be using Critical Firepower on for these raw MOs, but even then, if you know what you're doing, you can run Critical Firepower and just hug the monster's legs. Adrenaline, Sneak Attack, and Critical Firepower builds are all super niche, I won't really be including them here. I don't think people are going to be using them for the most part anyways. Rapid Fire Spread 2s is again not something I'd recommend for a budget setup. Not only is it worse than Spread 3s in general, it's actually harder to fit in the Rapid Fire decos here. So here's kind of a min-max Rapid Fire Spread 2 setup if you need ideas, but again I really wouldn't recommend it. The pair of 2s on this could be clutch, but I'm not really sure against what. 
Moving on to the Elemental Light Bowguns. These also use the same Wex 221 charm, even though it's kind of unoptimal for this setup and we have more stuff to move around, but I figured it would just keep things consistent to just use one charm. Firelight Bowgun really doesn't change much. The extra level 4 elemental decorations doesn't do anything for us since we already had the Silver Lose armor, which comes with Fire 3 anyway. Originally, I made the budget builds not have Dereliction as well, as they're kind of suicide, but I feel like Light Bowgun is good enough that it's fine to use on these, so I kind of like, went back to doing that. So we're dropping down from Elemental Reload and Critical Firepower to using just Standard Reload and Marksman, then slapping on a Power Barrel for the difference in the raw. It's going to be stronger for a budget light bowgun, but ultimately riskier. Old budget setup works fine though. For min-maxing this, you're going to want to get more recoil and reload so you can run Elemental Reload and Critical Firepower of course. Then finish off Attack Boost 7. Steadiness and Ballistics couldn't hurt either, but that's again some more future investment. But you will want Ballistics if you're going to run Critical Firepower on this. Ice Light Bowgun is getting kind of shafted since it has no slots and this charm really isn't doing it any favors. So it really does kind of want some augments. Kind of wish we had a better Ice Light Bowgun. Yes, Lunagarans is okay, but the status MO on Deoras is kind of too good to pass up, unfortunately. While this does have all the core skills here, you do have a lot of room for improvement. When going for upgrades, you're going to want to get your recoil and reload up so you can use critical firepower and a power barrel because I have a silencer on right now. And then you're going to want to get more attack up and burst. Steadiness is also great for a level 4 slot as we don't have too many options to put in them. But for min-maxing, we're pretty much going to be sticking to our cookie cutter elemental setup as there's not really any wiggle room. We have to have a piece of arc for bloodlust because it's just too good not to have so we can set up coalescence. And then dereliction 3, also pretty much required for all elemental stuff as well as Elemental Exploit 1 with Silverlose Chest, so that's like 4 pieces. So the only thing that really has any sort of wiggle room is the Waste, but we really don't have anything better than Sinister Magnamalos because one point of Mail of Hellfire is 15 raw, it's just too good. So sadly these Elemental sets really aren't going to be changing too much on the min-max side, just the budgets. For Kizu's Light Bowgun, the budget setup here is actually really good thanks to all its level 1 slots. Pretty much all the core skills here are done so you don't really need to get anything else to run Critical Firepower. The only significant upgrades to a min-max version would be to swap the pants for Sinister Mango so you have Mail of Hellfire, and then get some more attack decorations or augments, and then you're going to throw in a burst decoration so you have one of that. Other than that, Crit Element and Ballistics is probably the only other things you're going to want to fill up. In the same boat as Kizu's, a Maldron's Water Light Bowgun can also run the same set as it has very generous slots. When you're augmenting and upgrading this, again, get Sinister Pants. So this will effectively be the same set we've been using, though thanks to the level 4 elemental decoration we can fit a few more points of like steadiness for some quality of life stuff so we can run temper easier. And that's all the light bowgun stuff, so let's move on to heavy bowgun. With the raw setups, we're definitely getting much much better for a baseline build. Starting with Pierce 3 heavy bowgun, I'm still running redirect on all these heavy bowgun builds because it's pretty much mandatory for me playing without cats and traps, but you can get rid of it if you want. But as you can see, this budget set has everything still. These raw budget sets are insane. It even has ballistics. The only thing missing from these is some form of steadiness. While I don't have a min-max version of Pierce 3 setup, uh, the light bowgun just does it better with rapid fire Pierce 2s. You can use this as a base and then just grab augments for tune up for more raw, steadiness, and then agitator would be the next big ticket upgrade. I'm still not too sold on Pierce heavy bowgun and sunbreak. I'm sure it's good. I know a lot of people like it out there. I just haven't found it to be all that great for doing like my TA stuff. Moving on to Spread 3 Heavy Bowgun, our bread and butter. Get it? Spread butter? Any anyway, budget setup is looking spicy here too, allowing us to fit in all the mandatory and quality of life skills into these now. This set does not have sinister pants for Mail of Hellfire because Rackton pieces are just kind of too good, but you can squeeze that in with some augments to grab that extra 15 raw for free. Basically that's it though, so that's probably what I'm going to upgrade first, and after that, like, level 1 decorations for Steadiness 3 is still cheaper than filling in a level 4 for Steadiness, um, so that's a really cheap augments as well, but whatever works. Steadiness 3 and Ballistics 2 is great for spread. You don't need to get Ballistics 3 because Steadiness 3 is effectively the same thing, plus you won't have any deviation for any sort of stickies or exhaust ammo you might be using as well. And then lastly, if you can fit it, I would go again with Agitator. Max Might and Peak Performance don't do anything for Heavy Bowgun unfortunately because we have to spend too much time using Stamina with Rolling, Sliding, and Shoulder Checks, and we often won't have full HP due to said Shoulder Checks, Ship on Hyper Armor Slide, or Dereliction in the Elementals case. We also won't be using a normal Heavy Bowgun as there's really no point of its existence as it's significantly weaker than normal Light Bowgun, also it can't make use of Setting Sun which sucks. 
So with that, let's do the elemental heavy bow guns, because unfortunately we only have two raw heavy bow guns. So these budget elemental heavy bow gun setups will not be using dereliction, since that's super risky, especially on afflicted monsters. Light bow gun can walk away from most stuff. Heavy bow gun, no. So when you're upgrading your elemental heavy bow guns, the main thing would be to move over to arc fiend gloves and boots for dereliction. But with that, let's just check out these budget setups. Fire Heavy Bogan is pretty hot as we fill up pretty much all of our skills with still getting a point of steadiness and having all our level 1 point skills like Bloodlust, Elemental Exploit, Burst, and Coalescence in. I've opted for Orangutans over Arachnokodakis finally just due to the fact that we can get 70% affinity and crit element without missing out on attack 7, Wex, or Redirection now. Like these baseline sets are just so much better. So yeah, more raw, more damage. As I mentioned, if we're going to be upgrading past this for the set, either augment these or change pretty much everything else besides the Silver Low set. Arc Helm for Bloodlust and Coalescence, Arc Fiend Gloves and Boots, and Sinister Pants. It's pretty much our cookie cutter elemental setup that we've been using for a while, and it's honestly not going to get any better. The Espinas pieces are really great for low budget options, but we really need all those very specific skills for elemental ammo, being Bloodlust, Dereliction, Coalescence, and Elemental Exploit. Moving on to Ice Heavy Bowgun, I'm still sticking to Deoras. After fighting so many Lucent Nagarikugas, I couldn't find a reason to use Luna Garens over Kush. Yes, the slots suck, but the backup MO is too good. And as a result, this set is actually missing a lot of good skills. So there's plenty of upgrades that can be done to this set without swapping over to Dereliction if you want, if you just want to augment these. Thankfully, you only need one recoil and one reload for the Ice MO. But if you want to use the Sleep or Sticky on this Bowgun, I'd recommend getting those level 1 slots up. Crit Element is also a big upgrade here if you have the room for that, as well as getting Burst 1. And then after that, if you're still looking to get better damage on this, I would swap over to the Cookie Cutter Elemental setup and get Coalescence 3, Dereliction 3, and Steadiness 3. Budget Thunder Heavy Bowgun actually has most of kind of what you need, since the extra level 4 slot on the weapon can fill the Crit Element, and you only need Reload 2 for the Thunder ammo. There's not much to gain here with the Augments other than some slots for Coalescence or Burst, but I'd just upgrade over to Dereliction if you want to pump more DPS on Thunder Heavy Bowgun. But as you've probably noticed, this setup here is going to be kind of like a common place for budget sets. The Espina's head and gloves are incredibly strong pieces on their own. And the only reason why we swap out of them when we're starting to go into Augments is because they can't roll things like Dereliction and Bloodlust. Which, if you don't know, I've mentioned it many many times, it is way too good to pass up. And then lastly, we have Water Heavy Bowgun. Crab Buster is always amazing. It's effectively running the same setup as the Thunder Heavy Bowgun since our slots are similar. Sadly, no Ballistics here. We have to put a level 1 Deco in a level 4 slot. I mean, I guess you could move it to another slot and put something else in if that makes you feel better. But yeah, you're basically wasting one slot. So yeah, if you want, you can augment for slots for the level 1s on these pieces if you don't want to swap to Dereliction right away. You can also get Steadiness, Ballistics, Recoil, and Reload. All that stuff's going to help a lot, and that's really cheap augments. Yes, they're all quality of life skills, but again, super important. And then again, if you're still looking to get more damage out of the set, move over to the Dereliction setup. Okay, so that's all the bowguns. Now, I know there is a decoration for Blood right now that you can slot in to help alleviate your Dereliction drain. I get that. However, I don't find it necessary. Because as good as Dereliction is, it's not worth investing another like 2 or 3 level 2 skills on top of that just to keep your life up. That's too much investment. Because also, if you're running Dereliction, I mean, even if you're down just a little bit of health, it's going to get you one tap. So I don't think Bloodrite's going to save you like all that often. I feel like if you get hit, you're just going to die. So it's better to just not run Dereliction or just don't get hit. That's kind of your two options here. And I'd rather just drop Dereliction altogether and cram in more skills like Agitator, Adrenaline, Sneak Attack, or something else. Resentment also would be a decent option to add into like Dereliction sets, but also I'm waiting for level 4 decoration for that. But there is going to be some flexibility in all these sets. Like I said, it's going to really come down to your augments and you know how crazy those get for you. Alright, so that's basically all the Gunner sets for Title Update 2. Budget sets took a huge step forward. Meta sets, like the Super Min Max versions, got a tiny amount of power creep. And this is good though, and for the most part I feel like everyone can make some very solid gunner sets with average charms and no augments. That gap between the budget and the min max is getting really narrow and that's very much welcome. But that's all for me, thank you all for watching and good luck out there hunters.